Okay, welcome to this talk, uh, this late afternoon talk about MVC. Uh, I'm glad you're still awake. It's the last session before the closing keynote. Uh, good for you. It's going to be pretty heavy on the code side, so just wake up and, and uh, get ready. Uh, there will be lots of coding slides, but also show some live demos as well and, and some tool support. So. I work as a principal consultant for Cybercom, which is a consulting company based in Sweden. Uh, beside that, I'm a Java champion, I'm a NetBeans Dream Team member, uh, I'm a blogger, I'm a speaker, I'm a Twitterer, uh, I'm whatever, you can find the coordinates there. Uh, I'm a JSB ex expert group member for this JSR, which is MVC 1.0, and also a couple of other ones, which is uh, security and JMS. But this talk is about MVC. And MVC. Whenever we start a talk about this, we get one question, and that is, why? Why do we need this, and why do we need it now? And, and aren't we just fine with the frameworks that are really already here? So the, the answer to that question is, because you want it. We had a community uh, study uh, that allowed you to, to uh, answer questions about what do you want for the next version of Java EE. And more than 60% answered yes in the community st uh, study that they wanted MVC support. And uh, there, there isn't really a favorite framework either because more than 50% answered not sure for where to look for inspiration. So we're pretty much uh, a blank sheet and can start looking around and, and picking the best from any framework. Uh, another example here is uh, MVC is actually one of the most wanted features. Uh, you can see it here, it's about 8% of the, all the features for Java EE. This is also from the Java EE 8 service study. So, what is JSR 371 or uh, MVC 1.0? It's, it got started because the community won it. And the, uh, the way it, it's done is that an expert group is formed. And uh, the expert group is uh, led by Oracle. And uh, there are uh, lots of other companies involved, such as Red Hat, InnoQ, IBM, Kalom, LifeRay, Tmax Ops. And we're also six individual members. And lately, we've actually been added to the group two additional uh, individual members that are not listed here. So we're actually heavy on the, on the individual member side of this specification, and that's pretty cool. So we're well represented by the community. So what is MVC then? First of all, it is action-based MVC. And with action-based MVC, we mean that the controller is defined by the application. And there is no Java E standard uh, implementation uh, for this today. And the good news is that we're creating one right now. And another important thing here is that it's not a replacement for JSF. JSF is the other variant of MVC, which is called component based. And, and uh, they're going to live uh, happy beside each other. So let's look at the differences of action based and component based MVC. So most of you uh, probably know uh, the MVC pattern. You have a controller uh, and a model and a view, and you get a request to the controller, and it updates or gets something from the model, and it updates uh, or uh, forwards to a view. So for the component-based MVC, uh, this is where the controller is actually represented by the framework. And in, uh, in uh, JSF, it's, uh, for example, the faces servlet, that is the controller of the application. And you just write the, the model underneath and the views. And uh, uh, other examples uh, besides Java server faces is Wicked and Tapestry, and uh, also some discontinued uh, like Seam and, and Apache Click. So action-based MVC then, this is where the controller is made by the application developers. And examples of this are uh, Struts uh, or uh, Spring MVC. And there, uh, as I said, there are currently no standard Java EE implementation of this, but this is uh, what we're making now. 
So let's look at the, uh, the uh, biggest uh, comparable frameworks. And let's bring MVC, which has been around since 2005, and uh, real world actually since spring uh, 2005 in 2008. And this is probably the most used MVC framework today. And uh, uh, then we have Struts 2, which uh, have been around around the same time, uh, maybe a year earlier. And uh, this is still actually used pretty widely, but uh, I don't think there are many people starting up new uh, applications using this framework. But as you see, it took some time from it was launched until it was stabilized. So one of the important objectives for this specification is that we should build on existing Java EE technologies. That means that uh, MVC 1.0 or JSR 371 will only run in a Java EE container, or if you have the, the uh, support that the framework uh, requires to be able to run, such as uh, CDI, bean validation, uh, and, and etc. And, and for the view technology, we already have existing technologies such as uh, facelets and JSPs and, uh, and, uh, and other that are not covered by the specification, but also I'll get into later. But for contro uh, the controller, we actually don't have anything uh, in uh, the Java EE space that we can reuse. So that brings us over to a couple of uh, key decisions uh, in the expert group. Or maybe it's even better to say it's a key decision. Because this was uh, one of the first things uh, we discussed, uh, and, and uh, this is, uh, was a very uh, important discussion. Uh, the the um, expert group was divided, uh, but, uh, and we had a vote, and uh, we ended up on building MVC on top of JAXRS. And in my opinion, that's a very good decision, and I'll show you in the code samples why I think this is a good decision, uh, especially because we can use all the JAXRS developers out there will be familiar with this framework right away. It's, it's a very uh, uh, low learning curve to, to get started. So let's look at some uh, specific, specifics and look at the code. And uh, then we'll start with the controller and, and uh, as, it, as it's C in MVC and then move backwards to the model. So first, what we do is to create a controller class. And it's a simple Java class. It's just public class, hello, controller. Then we add uh, an annotation. And this is JAXRS at path annotation. So you say that this is where you find this controller. And this is one of the advantages of, of, of building on JAXRS. This is already there. And then we need to give this JAXRS reads are some special features uh, to be able to use this as a controller. And then we have introduced the new at controller annotation. And as I've put it here on, on the uh, class level of the uh, controller class, that means that every resource method in this class is a controller. So it's not the class that is a controller, it's the methods. So that means I could put the controller annotation on a single method in the application as well. And then I can have a, a JAXRS resource that can both serve as a controller in the MVC and also serve resources in my REST API. So I can mix and match and have these hybrid approaches. Whether that is a good thing or not, that's up to you, but it's flexible. <laughs> that's more or less all about the controller. Pretty simple, right? So let's look at the uh, views. If you have our simple controller, as we remember from the last slide, we can then uh, use the at get annotation to say that this is answering a get request from HTTP. And uh, we can return hello JSP. And this is different from, from uh, JAXRS, and this is because of the controller annotation. The, the uh, implementation will now know that this is the uh, page we're going to render. We can also return a viewable, which is a, 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 a new class in, uh, or a new interface in, uh, in, in the MVC specification. That means you can also uh, implement your own viewables, if you like. Or you can go more low level and actually uh, return a JAXRS response and have total control of which response codes and, and what you uh, add in the uh, response. 
We also added a at view annotation so you can actually have a void method uh, and, and just annotate your method with that view and, and this is the view you're rendering. And lastly, you can also put the at view annotation on the con uh, class level of the controller and then every method with will uh, render this view. It's pretty flexible and easy to use. I'll show some demos afterwards. So let's look at the models. Let's say we have this uh, uh, simple uh, CDI bean. It's uh, request scoped and it just has a message. And it has uh, uh, getters and setters for uh, that message. And it is, uh, it is at named, uh, so we know that we can find it. And uh, it's, it's a simple CDI bean. That means that in my controller, which in this case uses the at view uh, annotation on class level, I can inject this greeting. I can set the message on it. If attendees could make their way and to the sessions, please, that would be much appreciated. We're closing the exhibit hall. Thank you. Okay, thank you. And, and uh, uh, th then you can set the message on, on the greeting, and since it request scopes, it's, uh, it's then accessible by the view when you render it. So you can access it with the uh, expression language in the JSP page. If, if your uh, view engine, for some reason, doesn't support CDI, then we have uh, uh, created a, a simple helper class to help you out with that. It's the same controller as it used to be, only this time we inject a models object. And this is a, a new class in the MSC specification. And the reason why it's called models and not model is that there is an existing interface in JSF that is called model. So we don't have, want to have a name conflicts or anything. So models is a good name as any. And if you do like this, it's, it's just like a hash map. You put the message with, with, the, with the key and a value. And it is accessible in the view. So this, this is the basics of the application. You have the, the controller, the, the uh, views, and, and the, the uh, models. Then to be able to create a real web application, we also need uh, some validation. And uh, uh, JAXRS comes with uh, bean validation built in. So since we're piggybacking on JAXRS, we get bean validation for free. So let's see how that works. If, for example, we have a controller that uh, has a, a post method and it takes a form uh, bean in here, it's annotated with bean prime, that's JAXRS. And uh, we have put the at valid, which is bean validation, in front of it. That means that when this uh, uh, method is called, this uh, bin validation is executed and handled by the framework underneath. So, for example, if uh, we have a not null that isn't uh, satisfied or something, then a, a constraint validation exception will be thrown. And we can do it the exact uh, normal way that we would do with any JAXRS application to create a uh, exception mapper for constraint validation exception and uh, just do whatever we want to do with it, depending on our application. But this means that all uh, validation from all controllers will flow through this handler. And that means it's, it's, uh, it's also difficult to recover if the context is lost. It's difficult to provide a controller-specific logic, then we have to subclass the, the, the uh, or have if, if statements and, and st stuff to, to, to find out. So one size does not fit all here, like it does for JAXRS. So we need a little bit more. So what we've done in, in uh, MSE is to add a binding result. And that means if the, the uh, constraint validation uh, happens here uh, from bin validation, then we just add this to a bin result, and you as a developer check if this uh, uh, binding result has failed or not, and then you can do controller-specific logic here and have a very finer control for every uh, controller method in your application. And this binding result has just previously uh, uh, just been extended to uh, have binding errors, which is like uh, if you put, try to put a number in a string or string in a number or, or vice versa. 
and we have the validation errors which are if the uh, email format isn't met or the phone number is wrong or it's not null or whatever. And, and you can get these per parameter, so you can put the, the uh, uh, validation message, uh, messages uh, beside your input field, for example. So then I talked a little bit about uh, the uh, view engines. And uh, the specification says that uh, JSPs and servlets must be supported by an implementer. But you as a developer or a implement, uh, reference implementation developer can implement uh, and support more view engines, such as uh, Thymely for Velocity or ASCIIDoc or whatever you want to uh, write your views in. So, so what we uh, call that is bring your own view engine, more or less. So you can do whatever you want. And that, that is because of this interface called view engine, where you more or less uh, just check uh, implement this supports method and check, can check if ends with JSP, for example, and then it's a JSP, or you can have whatever uh, tests you want to have there to, to select this view engine. And then you process the view and, and, and send it out. But this also uh, opened up for conflicts. If you have view engines that, uh, that are rendering the same, you have two JSP view engines. But this you can solve by setting your super view engine uh, with a very high priority and just use, use the uh, priority from the Java annotation and uh, this will be preferred for the uh, default one. Since we use, uh, reuse the CDI system, we also get CDI events. So, so this is more or less uh, for free, and uh, CDI events or these events from the controller can be used for monitoring, debugging, tuning, uh, etc. And uh, we've defined five of these uh, events, and that is before the controller is called, an event is fired, after the controller, before the view is processed, after the view is processed, and when a controller is redirecting to another controller. And this is, uh, can you use just as you would use any CDI uh, observer? Just observe the uh, event you want to listen to, and you can do whatever you want to do with it. This is one of the ad ad advantages of building on the Java EU platform. We get all this stuff for free. So what about security then? When you create uh, web applications, we have something called cross-site request forgery, for example. So that would be nice to have some support for that. And we do. We added a controller called uh, CSRF valid. So if you uh, d default right now, the, the uh, CSRF uh, validation is turned off. We are discussing in, in the expert group that it actually should be turned on by default, and you explicitly have to turn it off if you don't want it. Uh, so, so that's probably what, where we're going to end. Uh, we currently have three levels. It's off, it's implicit, and it's explicit. If it's off, it's nothing uh, is validated at all. If it's implicit, that means that all your resource methods are validated for cross-site request forgery, and you don't need this annotation. If you have it to explicit, that's the, the, where you as a developer has most control, then you annotate the methods you want to be validated with at CSRF valid annotation, and it's validated. And on the client side, if a at CSRF valid annotation is, or it is implicit, you need to put this uh, CSRF uh, token in your uh, post request. And these, these are obtained through the MVC context, which is a helper object that lives in, in your, the context of the application. And you have, uh, among other things, the uh, CSRF uh, functionality. And we also have uh, some HTML escaping and, and other goodies there, so you can use. Uh, I'll, I'll show a demo of this afterwards. And then we have scopes. So since we are leveraging CDI, we get all the CDI scopes for free. 
And all controllers by default are request scopes, uh, as, as follows from JAXRS. But uh, all scopes are available such as application, session, request, and conversation. But there is one scope that is missing from this when we're talking action-based MVC framework. Can you guess which one? I think in some other uh, applications or frameworks it's called flash scope. What, or what we call it is uh, redirect scoped. And this is when you have uh, the uh, typical uh, post uh, redirect get pattern. Because uh, if you build an application like this, you have a reservation that posts uh, to your reservation controller. The, uh, the reservation controller updates your model and then returns OK to the browser uh, and shows a confirmation page. What happens if the user hits refresh in the browser? Right? The post is resubmitted, and we get this resubmit post warning in your browser. So to, to get around this, what, what you, you usually do is the post re, uh, redirect get. So when the browser uh, uh, posts the, the reservation request, the controller updates the model, it redirects uh, to, to uh, the browser, which does a get to the configuration controller, and that returns OK. I'll show you this in, in a demo after us. In code, this would look like this. And if you re remember the, the greeting class, here it's redirect scoped rather than request scoped. That means it lives through a redirect. So you can do a post and a get, and, and the, the, the values are still there. So that means uh, the greeting or the controller is exactly the same as it was. The only thing you need to remember is that the controller is request scoped, but the, the uh, greeting is redirect scoped. So when you hear, uh, do a post to this uh, uh, from hello method, it sets the method to hello devox and it redirects to a2, which is in another class, it could have been in the same because a, a controller is just a method, but here it's in, in another controller, it has a two, and it returns the here JSP, and the here JSP can access the greeting. And what's important to know, it's this is the same beam. The controller is a new one. So, tired of slides, just waiting for beer and, and uh, dev rocks. Right. Let's look at some code. So here is uh, a, a simple application. Uh, what's important to, to uh, uh, notice is that it is a Java E application. You only need the uh, provided uh, demand, Maven dependency for Java E. But since Java E8 isn't launched yet, uh, we also need to have the API and the implementation. And, and as you see, the implementation is, is runtime and, and the API is, is compile time. So we program against the API and, uh, and just have to have bundler runtime until Java E8 is available or some server supports it. So all my Examples here have exactly this POM file. It's no magic. It fits in one page, and it's just the way it should be. So the, the controller is uh, very simple. As, as you see here, it's a, a post. I have this validation on execute here. Executable type none, that means that the JAXRS bean validation is uh, paused. You can also define this in an XML file, uh, but this means that I can use my uh, uh, binding resource results. And uh, here I, you see I do the uh, is failed check, and in this case I just loop through them and, and set properties on, on the uh, model subject, which is the models I've just injected. So th this is the example where I use the, the models. Uh, 
And then the views, the de de default location for views is in web in views folder. Uh, that's where I have my uh, hello and I just write hello name, which I get from the model. So if we uh, run this one, I can say here, uh, Donald Duck. So it then it says, hello, Donald Duck. It's no surprise there. It's not that difficult. Uh, exactly the same, a hello uh, application just using CDI. It is uh, exactly the same, only on uh, this case, I, I don't inject a model's object. I just have a hello bean here, which is, in this case, it's request scoped. And I just reuse it in, in my uh, UI. So I have it as a uh, form bean and also a value bean, which I shows out. And, and that is up to you if you want to do that or if you want to set properties on another bean or whatever. And the views in this case is exactly the same. Just here I take first name and last name out from the hello bean. And you also notice that in this case, I have some uh, bin validation saying that n the name should have at least one character and shouldn't be null. So if I go in here and don't write anything, it says that property for first name uh, size must be between 1 and 16. And that's uh, the bin validation I've got here. So this is the case where I do the, the uh, crude approach and, uh, and just uh, return to an error page uh, with a bad request and, and just show the error JSP. So let's look at a slightly more advanced example. And the, this is where I will show the post redirect get pattern. In, in this case, I have a controller. And uh, uh, in the controller, I get in a reservation beam. And I uh, just uh, uh, set properties from this one on, on the uh, reservation, which I've injected here. So it's, it's CDI all the way. I check for uh, merits errors. And I set the validation errors on a message object I've created. And you see, here in this case, I return to the, the same page which I came from. And if, it, uh, if it's OK, I'll go to a confirmation page. So let's look at uh, how this looks. So we can look at the reservation form bin. You can see it's just a simple uh, POJO with uh, bin validation annotations. And the uh, reservation object is just a request scoped uh, with, with the properties. And messages are just a list of uh, validation messages. So if I go into the new class here, and I uh, write something, it says there that the count must be greater than or equal to zero. And it says enter a valid date. And that comes from my bean validation in the here. It says enter a valid date. So it reads up the, the validation message from this one. Uh, we also added on the uh, MSC context, the, uh, so you can get the locale from the the request. And this is depending on uh, you as the developer can can figure out how you want to uh, retrieve that local and implement your own local uh, discover mechanism. If you use a URL like uh, uh, UK dot something, or if you have a, a header parameters or, or a trusted browser or whatever, how you want to do it. So it's very flexible like that way. But this way, it's, it's not no, not no uh, language support. So if I fill in the, the fields where I am supposed to, you get to the confirmation page. But this is the example. If I now uh, uh, refresh this page, I get a form resubmission. So this is what we want to avoid by using the post redirect get pattern. Let's go back and see how to fix this. First of all, uh, in the reservation controller, we don't want to return directly to the OK, we uh, to the confirmation. We want to uh, redirect. To, and we don't want to get to the page. We want to get to a page called confirmation. 
spell it right there. And uh, I also cheated a little bit and created a confirmation controller. And, and in the confirmation controller, you can see I just have injected a reservation and I just show the, the confirmation page. But this isn't enough. What we also need to do is to take this reservation message and make it redirect scoped. So now I have a redirect scoped uh, uh, reservation and I redirect from my controller. So let's just restart this one. Let me come in and I write the properties and save it. And I'm here. And, and if you don't trust me, let's look at uh, what's happening here. Let's go back to the um, observation and do it again. And now I'll clear this one and look closely at what's happening down here. Okay, we get a 400. Uh, that's good. Validation. And you see here I get a post which returns a, a 303. It's hard to read, but it says uh, 303 C other with a reference to the confirmation. And the confirmation is then uh, retrieved with a get request. So you get a post redirect get for free just by writing redirect dot and the, the uh, reference to the controller and have a redirect scope bin so I can uh, get, get the information from the bin here. Let's add security. If I go in, uh, then I can in my um, uh, application config, which is a, a uh, configuration exactly, uh, it's a JAX-RS application, uh, just as I would with the JAX-RS, I'll just add the controllers I've got. And I can also set some, some uh, properties there. And as you see here, I've set uh, CSRF options to explicit. That means that uh, uh, if I set an, uh, an at CRSF valid annotation on a, a controller method, uh, it will validate it. So, if I go in here and I add the at C CSRF valid, My application is redeployed. I go into my page. I fill in the, the fields. And, it, and as you see, I will now get a validation. Uh, the CRRF validation will be done before the bean validation. So here I get a 403 validation CSRF failed to missing field. And, and as you see, I haven't even filled in uh, the date yet. So it doesn't matter, this is executed first. So how do we fix this? Yeah. I go into my reservation page. And I add uh, the uh, CSR uh, name and value from the MSC context. And I'll run it again. And see, it, it works. And now, now I have a, a, a page that is protected for cross site request forgery. So it's, it's very simple for you as an application developer to to uh, uh, easily create pretty uh, decent, uh, good uh, applications by using these annotations. So uh, those who are observant have seen that I'm using uh, uh, NetBeans here, which is the uh, best IDE ever for uh, uh, Java E development. Uh, if you haven't tried it, try it out. And uh, as you see here, uh, Gertjan is sitting in, in the middle here. He's created a plugin for NetBeans yesterday that shows the uh, MSC support here. So you get the MSC controllers exactly the same way uh, as you would get the, the RESTful uh, resources in, in uh, REST. 
So we already actually have tool support for, for uh, MOC. And talking about tool support, uh, we have an, an Indian guy uh, called uh, Gaura Gupta, and he, he's created a generator for MVC. So you can, based on a database model, generate a, a complete MVC application. And he has a tutorial on his website, I'll show you the link afterwards, where you're up and running in five minutes to, to get an application. So I'll show you here. What you do is just to create a normal web application. It's exactly the same one as I've done earlier. It just has the dependencies uh, needed for MVC. There are no source code here. I, j I just have a index.html page, so that's all I've got here. And uh, I have a uh, JPA diagram. I have a, a cookbook, an owner of the cookbook, and a, a recipes in the cookbook. So it's a very simple data model, uh, and uh, there's support here to, to add uh, what you, you want to have of uh, bean validation constraints and database constraints and whatever you need to, to create your data model. And you can, uh, uh, yeah, you can do any, any JPA stuff here and uh, print it nicely so you have a documented uh, data model of your application. And the cool thing here is to right-click on this one and say generate source code. And this is where the magic happens. Then I get a dialog saying, uh, do you want to generate some MVC stuff? And, and uh, uh, here's, here's uh, some, some package names you fill in. Uh, you see that, say that I want MVC is one of zero controller. Currently it supports JSPs, so, but we can build it out with the other stuff. This is the default location of the views. If you, for some reason, want some another place, you can override that. Um, it it gives, gives you some name, naming uh, stuff. Do you want it as a hybrid class? That means uh, have the controller on the, on the method level, or do you want it on, on the class level as an only MVC application? Do you want bean validation or not? Uh, and uh, it, it's also actually support for security. Do you want auth authentication in there or not? But then you need the, the JSR 375 uh, Java E security API in your POM file as well. So I haven't done it yet now, so I won't show that one here. But this is something you, uh, you should check out. Here, say, say we have support for uh, CSRF, if you, if you want to have it added or not. And you can also see generate uh, listeners for all the events, uh, if, if you want that. And it also says uh, if you want this uh, session being facades, or if you call it repository or services, or whatever you want to call them. And you can give them some naming pattern. So it's just to fill in basic information, or just use the defaults and click generate. And this will generate a complete MVC application for you, which is a pretty good start point for if you want to do a demo quickly for a client or something. So let's just run this one. Build it first. And while it's building, you can see here it's, it's created a lot of, of uh, uh, classes for me. Uh, the uh, controller logic is generated. Uh, whatever I need. It, it uh, redirects to a, a error page if you get an error. So there's some, some tuning to do here and there, but it's, it's basically pretty good. It says completion error here. I'm not sure why. Uh, yes, I know why. That's because uh, I'm using a snapshot in my demos. Uh, because the, the validation errors were, were added after the uh, uh, milestone release. So let's just... There you go. Let's run it. Uh, I'm running these uh, samples in uh, Pyara. Uh, the latest version is called uh, 411162. And uh, it's, um, you can also run it in uh, Glassfish uh, uh, nightly builds if you want to. Uh, but you need uh, one of the Glassfish family uh, because it's, uh, the, the implementation of MVC is based on Jersey. So you need Jersey in, in, in your application. There you see it, it's a very simple uh, UI. Um, it's actually um, uh, mobile friendly as well, so, so if, if you uh, 
you want to see, but that depends on how the CSSs are made. You can you can go and click the details. I can uh, can can add a recipe uh, cookies. That's uh, uh, yummy cookies and uh, sugar sugar and chocolate. Uh, I won't get any spelling uh, prices today, but well, and uh, I can see in the dashboard, and it says he has one recipe, and so, so it's a very simple application. But you, you see how easy I generated it. It's just to to, to draw the uh, Deadvest diagram and just click generate, and you've got everything. It's pretty awesome, and it, and it's uh, it is continuously developed. So so checking in on it uh, once in a while and and uh, get get some inspiration there. So if you haven't tried NetBeans yet, this is a good reason for doing so. So, let's go back to the slides. Where are we? There. So, that was uh, uh, tool support. This is uh, Gara Gufta. This is very fine, the J JPA model or uh, for, for that I showed you, the plugin. It's just download it and, and install it in NetBeans. It works uh, right away. The logical view of uh, MVC is by Gertrude here. Uh, is updating us as, as well as we go. So just uh, try it out. It, it works uh, pretty nice. Uh, so to sum up, MVC is action-based MVC. That means you as a developer develop the controllers. It is based on existing Java EE technologies. The, uh, and that is the, the most important objective of this specification is that we shouldn't reinvent something that is already provided by the platform. Uh, that means the model can be CDI, Beam Validation, JPA, EJBs, whatever. Uh, the views, technologies, facelets, JSPs, uh, and et cetera, time lift, velocity, whatever you want to uh, use as technologies. And uh, the controller is a new annotation uh, built on top of uh, JAXRS. And that is, it's built on top of JAXRS. That means if you're familiar with JAXRS and have created some REST APIs in your life, the, the path to start uh, creating MVC application is pretty short and it's easy to get started. The project page for this specification you can find on java.net. Uh, just uh, search for MVC spec. Uh, we have GitHub uh, where you can find all the source code and the latest snapshots and download and, and build yourself and try it out and fork it and uh, come with uh, feedback if you find something. The reference implementation is called Ozark and it's uh, on ozarkjava.net. It's also uh, uh, forked to the, the MSC spec uh, GitHub page. The samples for this pr presentation is on my GitHub. Uh, I do uh, some blogging for uh, for my, my my site here uh, about MVC and other stuff, um, and uh, also sometimes uh, I get something published on Dzone or, or Voxed or similar. So that's all I uh, had for today. So it's been a pleasure being here and having the last slot of the evening. So if you have any questions, we have a couple of minutes left. Yes. Is the binding support of an int uh, types by code And if yes, how do you handle formatting? OK, the question was if the binding support uh, uh, Java 8 types just as local date and uh, how the uh, date format is done. Uh, it's based on bean validation. And uh, as far as I know, bean validation does not support Java 8. I'm not sure, actually. So it depends on bean, bean validation, actually. We haven't built anything ourselves. And, and the binding is done by JAXRS, so we also rely on them being able to support it. Any more questions? Yeah, the request scoped. Yeah, because request scoped and the other one is redirect, redirect. How does the controller know that it's called support and what it is? When you press confirm, it's like technically the browser and say, it's called support. Then there is some way to do it. 
Yeah, so, so the question is, how does the controller know how to handle the redirect scope? Yes, uh, uh, the specification says that it should handle it. And uh, uh, the details of the implementation I have to actually look into to, to give you a, a reasonably good answer. Uh, but it is a CDI scope, uh, and, and in this case, maybe uh, some of you saw that I had a property saying it's a cookie that is used for the redirect to, to keep the, the variables. So you can have a cookie-based approach, or you can have it as parameters in your request, or you can do it uh, some other way. But you need to have some mechanism underneath so, so the, the controller will catch up on it. In my example, it, I think I used cookie-based to have a nicer URLs. OK. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. Um,